Welcome to Performing Titrations. In this lesson, we're going to look at a specific lab technique that's used to figure out the concentration or molarity of an unknown acid or base. And this technique is called a titration. So in this video, we're going to be titrating an unknown acid. So here's an unknown acid of HCl. We don't know the concentration. And we're going to be using a known base. So we're using sodium hydroxide 0.1 molar. So in general, for a titration, if you don't know what the acid is, you would use a known base to figure out what the concentration is. If you didn't know what the base was in terms of concentration, you would have a known acid that you would use to titrate it. So let's see how we're going to titrate this unknown acid with this strong base, NaOH, that we know the concentration of, to figure out what the concentration of the HCl is. The first thing we need to know about performing titration is the equipment that we use. And the most important piece of lab equipment for this is called the burette. Here you can see a burette. You should notice a couple things about this burette. It's a measuring device, so it has gradations all along it. But what's unusual about it is that the zero mark is at the very top of the burette. So when the burette is filled, it's at zero. This particular burette is a 50 milliliter burette, so you can see as we go down, we get to 50 milliliters at the bottom. And the burette ends with a valve called a stopcock and a small glass tip. It's important to note about the valve that when the valve is lined up vertically like it is here, so it's in line with the burette, it's open. To close it, you would turn it perpendicular to the burette, and you'll see that in the video. Now that we know the features of a burette, let's look at the setup for the titration itself. I started by filling this burette to the zero mark with our known concentration base. So the 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide is in this burette. The next thing I'm going to do is place a beaker containing about 50 milliliters of water under the burette. You could also use an Erlenmeyer flask. And then I'm going to add 5 milliliters of my unknown concentration acid. So when I do start adding the base to the acid, I'm going to get a change in pH. I need some way to track that. And I'm going to use an indicator for this. And the indicator we're going to use is phenolphthalein. So like all indicators, phenolphthalein changes color based on pH. It's going to go from colorless to pink over a pH range of 8.3 to 10. That means below 8.3 it's going to be colorless, so as I'm adding to this acid you can see it remains colorless because the acid is clearly below pH 8.3. But as I add the base and the pH increases, I'll eventually hit this range and we'll see a color change to pink. You can see that right where the base contacts the acid, we have a color change. But it's not a permanent color change. We're only seeing that initial pink because the base is turning the phenolphthalein pink right where it hits the acid. But then it's very quickly neutralized. So the basic idea behind the titration is the fact that we're doing a neutralization reaction. In this case, we have NaOH neutralizing hydrochloric acid. And according to the neutralization reaction, I should get NaCl and H2O. Now the whole reason to do the titration is that I'm trying to find out how much NaOH I need to completely neutralize the volume of HCl that I started with. So I'm trying to get to the equivalence point. The reason for that is that at this equivalence point I know that the moles of NaOH equal the moles of HCl. These two have to be exactly equal at the equivalence point because they get used up in the neutralization reaction. And if I know that the moles equal each other, I can figure out the concentration of this unknown HCl. So for the titration itself, as I'm going through and I'm constantly adding base, I'm looking for a slight permanent color change because that's going to tell me that I've hit this pH range, 8.3 to 10, and the phenolphthalein changed color. So here you can see that we've reached the slight permanent color change we're looking for. The phenolphthalein is now showing up as a light pink in the solution. We call this the end point of titration. This is where the indicator changes color. And it's essentially our guess at where the equivalence point is. You'll notice the pH range of phenolphthalein is 8.3 to 10. It's not quite pH 7. 
So this color change that we reached, this end point of the titration, is basically us guessing at where this equivalence point occurs. And the key piece of information we're trying to get from this is the volume of NaOH added from the burette to reach this endpoint. That's the whole purpose of running this. We're trying to figure out how much NaOH was needed to completely neutralize the unknown HCl. Now one more thing I'm going to show you here is that if I had gone too far and I added too much base, as I'm going to do right now, you'll see that instead of having a slight color change, I get this deep, vibrant pink color. If you see this degree of a color change, you've gone too far and you've put in too much base. You've essentially passed the equivalence point by too much. Now titrations can give you very accurate results, but indicators are limited in the accuracy because you're using the endpoint to guess at the equivalence point. If we instead use a device called a pH probe, we can get even better results. So let's take a look at some data collected using a pH probe. This is a titration curve generated from using a pH probe. Essentially, every five milliliters of NaOH added, we have a data point that shows where the pH was being read on that meter. And you can see from the shape of this graph that right around 50 milliliters of NaOH, there's a sharp upswing. And it suddenly goes out of the acidic range and into the basic range. Now this titration curve is really useful because right here, the middle of this sort of upswing, that is the equivalence point. And so for this example of the titration, it took 50 milliliters of NaOH to fully titrate the unknown acid. The pH probe is going to give you a more accurate picture of how much volume was needed to reach the equivalence point. And in the next video, we're going to see how to use this volume information that we've gathered from either the pH probe or from using the indicator. Remember that the key piece of information from a titration is the volume of the known acid or base that's added. So in our example today, that was the sodium hydroxide. You're either using the endpoint of an indicator or the titration curve from a pH probe to figure out the equivalence point. And more importantly, the volume added to reach that equivalence point. So that wraps up our lesson on performing titrations. Write down any questions you have in your notes and bring them with you to class.